Hello! I think we're on. I am trying desperately to like anchor this. Um, I'm holding a phone and uh, it's, I can't get it to sit in this little anchor. Anyway, good morning. Saturday morning again. I think it's the 28th, 28th of January. I can't believe January is almost over. And uh, it's been a crazy week for me. I don't know. I broke out in hives, and I don't know why, everywhere, you can see right there, and uh, anyway, I'm feeling fine, I don't know why they're there, hopefully they'll go away soon, but anyway, so um, I just wanted to get online and answer a few questions, we had a lot that came through, and some of them were from last week, and they were really good questions, so I have them on my computer, and I thank you, oh hi Jeff! My son's watching. Mwah. Hi, Jeff. Thanks for your service. Love my kids. Anyway, um, so the questions that were asked were really good ones from last week. Some from last week, some from this week. And I had to do research. I learned a lot. So thank you very much for um, <laughs> Kevin. Kevin, Linda Cutter. Hi, Cutter. Cutter. Okay, let me just interrupt this discourse to, to tell you about Cutter. Okay, Cutter is an author, sorry about the close-up, that I write with. And this is his book, one of his books, Till Death. Sorry, it's backwards because I don't know how to do it on the phone. And the other one he has is called The Next Victim. Sorry again about the close-up. This one. Cutter is a freaking amazing writer. So if you are somebody who loves... Um, like murder mystery and suspense fiction, you should grab Cutter's book. He's really, really good. He publishes with Dossie Blant too. So we're co-authors, co-published with Dossie Blant. Okay, back to the questions. So the questions were really good. I had to do research. I learned a lot. And I appreciate you guys sending them in. Thank you very much. So for next week, post your questions here, post your questions, you know, somewhere on my um, Facebook feed comments and I will try and get to them. Okay, first question. George asked a ton of questions and I had to look them up. So here we go. Oh, hi Danny. Hi Jeff. Jeff, I'm going to answer one of your questions. A lot of people are here. Another Jeff. Okay, so the first question is actually from Jeff who just joined us. Thank you. Um, he asks, the question is the, the key, um, the headline for this video. So it, the question is, why were women bad luck on a ship? And it was really on any ship, not just a pirate ship. But in Jeff's answer right now is because the sea would be jealous. That's true. He's right. So um, the answer is basically that women were considered bad luck because they would distract the sailors. It's not just a pirate thing. It's a sailor thing. So they would distract the, the sailors and the sea would be angry because the, the sailor, this is what they believe. This is folklore. So the seas would be angry because the sailors, the pirates, whatever, um, weren't doing their duties the way they needed to be done. And so they would punish the ship by basically creating a maelstrom and sinking it, causing bad seas, that kind of thing. So, um, so that's true. Jeff's right. That's exactly what happened. But, side note, uh, the sea, it was also believed that the sea loved naked women on the ships. And not necessarily live ones, but the figureheads that were on the bowsprit were, um, were naked, most of them, or half naked. And that's why they always put women on the bowsprit, was to help calm the sea so that they would have a safe travel. So that's why you see those figureheads that look like naked women on a bowsprit. Thanks for your question, Jeff. Uh, he also says, while well, it is said that the sea and Neptune's daughters would become angry of a woman on a ship, it is said that you can calm the sea if the woman bared her breasts. Okay, there you go. So the naked woman thing. Thanks, Jeff. That was a good question. It was fun to look it up. Okay, second one. Here's all these questions now from George. So George, who I adore, mm -hmm. his question is, what did pirates eat mostly? I learned something here because I thought I was like all, of this, all smart about this. But apparently... Um, they ate better than I thought. This the pirate the pirates actually had a better food source than the regular sailors did. So the mariners at sea didn't have the opportunity to eat 
the, as, as well as the others, which is one of the reasons why a lot of the sailors would leave service in the Navy, whether it's British or Scottish or Spanish or who, whatever, naval force, French, um, the Dutch, they would all leave that and go to piracy because the pirates ate better. That's one of the reasons. Um, it was a, it was a governed on a pirate ship, um, equally. So everybody got equal spoils. So except when it came to divvying up treasure, like gold and silver and their plunder. But when it came to food, they all ate the same. And a lot of what they ate was, uh, bread. Here's a list. I had to write it down. So here's the list. Bread, butter, cheese, meat, beef, pork, fowl, citrus fruits. Hmm. Citrus fruits, probably when they could get them. Lemons, I'm guessing. Uh, preserves. I don't know what that would be but then I think it would be kind of nasty olives capers mussels and berries so mussels make sense because that's seafood when supplies were low fresh fish such as snapper shark catfish grouper albacore were caught often and barbecued on board but they have to be careful not to light the you know the ship on fire obviously um turtles were a biggie so turtle soup was a delicacy and you know I've always thought if these guys are at sea and there's all this seafood out there, which happens to be my favorite food. Why aren't they eating a bunch of seafood? So I guess they probably did. But, um, you know, I always heard that hardtack, which is a, it's like a biscuit. It's like a, it looks like a saltine cracker, only it's thicker, like shortbread, but it doesn't taste good. It's like eating cardboard. And they had a lot of shortbread, or not shortbread, a lot of hardtack on board that they would eat. So um, that's... That's the food that they ate. And I guess they ate better than what I thought they did. So good for them. Um, alcohol, of course, was the biggie. Wine, brandy, and rum, whatever they could get. And a lot of times when they, they would pillage or plunder a ship and there wasn't any gold or silver or any jewels or anything of value, the most valuable, of course, depending upon what the pirates situation was, was the food. So they would barter for food. They would um, grab the booze. And they would bring that on board, and a lot of times that that is what they would um, consider their biggest plunder. And of course, we all heard of pirate grog. Grog is made of sugar and whatever booze they had, alcohol. Usually it was rum or wine or even brandy sometimes that they would get from ships. That would go in water. And then they would add a little sugar, sometimes a lemon. And if you've read my book, you have you know what happens with grog and why it's so important on the pirate ships. So um, read my books if you don't know. There's a little secret behind that. But anyway, so that's what they would drink. And they would call it, they had different names for it. They would call it, let's see, Flip, I've never heard this, Flip Hipsy Punch. I've heard of Punch. You've heard of Rum Punch. They do that in the Caribbean sometimes when you go down there. Oops, I'm losing my computer. Grog we've all heard of. Um, but the one thing that's of note is Black Bart. Bartholomew Roberts was a teetotaler. He did not drink at all. And he would not allow alcohol on his ship at all. So none of his crew drank. He was the exception to the rule. Anyway, hope that answered your question. It was a little bit of a long answer, but I thought it was kind of fun. Okay. George, what was the average age of a pirate at death? I had to look all this up on Wikipedia because I have no idea. But I know they didn't live long. Um, it's recorded that there were pirates as young as 14, 12 to 14, probably cabin boys, and as old as 50, which doesn't sound very old to me, but apparently that's considered old on a pirate ship. And so I remember 50. 50 wasn't bad. Anyway, so um, 14 to 50, the average age was 25. When they all die depend upon a lot of things. Battle, caught, some live to be to die a ripe old age, you know, on land. It's it's all diverse. So if anybody has a better answer to that than me, I would love for you to share it with us because I don't know what the average age of the pirates were when they died. My guess is probably mid to late twenties. I don't think I don't think they or me even thirty. Probably twenties to thirties. That's probably my educated guess for what that's worth. Okay. Two more. Three, three left. Okay, George again. Did pirates walk the plank? And why did pirates have parrots? And I'm going to put those two together because the answer is those are myths. They came about from um, probably from Treasure Island is what we're thinking. So Long John Silver, seen with the peg leg. We talked about that last week. 
And he's also seen with a parrot. And in Treasure Island, you read about uh, pirates making their victims walk the plank. None of that happened. Walking the plank is fictional. They didn't do that. Now, they did do a lot of other torture. And if you want to talk about pirate torture, I'm happy to do that at another time. But because there's some really nasty things they did. Walking the plank probably would have been merciful. But anyway, walking the plank is fictional. And the parrots... The parrots, honestly, they they didn't really have pets on board, mainly because they would get in the way. And if they were at battle, they, you know, obviously they cleared the decks, they wanted everything off, nothing there to impede them from fighting or whatever they had to do. So an animal or a pet was was probably not part of, of real reality, what they really did. However, it was believed that cats were good luck on a ship. So guess who wrote a cat on a ship? Yep, so when you read the books, you'll get to read about the cat that joins the crew. I won't tell you what book it is, but it's not the first one. And uh, as far as the parrot concerned, the, real, the truth is, and historically, probably they traded them. They probably brought them in, and that was part of the merchandise that they either sold at port or traded or whatever. So, the, thanks, Jeff. Good answer. <laughs> About the age. Yeah, no kidding. I don't know. So anyway, that's the story about the animals and walking the plank. And so then the la Oh, and speaking of... Well, we'll move on. Okay. So then the next question is... And this is the last from Adam. And I have to say it the way he wrote it. What be me drink of choice, mate? Okay. What is my drink of choice? You guys will die. I love Diet Cherry Cokes in the summer with grenadine. For those that know what grenadine is, it's just pomegranate juice. So it turns my Diet Coke into a cherry Coke. Love it. That's my favorite over lots and lots and lots of ice. So I am known to walk around with those a lot. Um, in the summertime or in the wintertime when it's really cold, like right now around the United States, I am, I love peppermint mochas. Those are my favorites. So I'll drink those. Now I do not drink alcohol. Ah, so I'm not, I'm not a true pirate because I don't imbibe, although I could be part of Black Bart's crew. So that's good because he's probably my favorite pirate. Anyway, um, but just because I don't drink doesn't mean I'm not fun at a party. I just want to tell you that. And speaking of parties, we're having a big party in Savannah in March. Um, Dose Blant is going to be hosting the Authors Con there. So, um, we will be doing a bunch of authors are getting together. We're going to go to beautiful Savannah, my favorite place. And we're going to spend time at several bookstores, signing books, Barnes and Noble, the pirate house, which we will be having dinner after you all can join us. And, um, a few, there's a couple of other local bookstores that I'm not sure about. Shelby's figuring that out. will let us know. We're also going to go on a cemetery stroll. So walking through some of those old cemeteries for research and for fun, I can hardly wait. And just enjoying, uh, oh, the Irish festival. The Irish festival is that weekend. So I'm not sure how we're involved with that, but we will be to the Irish festival. So if anybody's in Savannah, please let me know. Um, we're also, all of the authors, it's going to be uh, Barnacle Bill, He's always done fun. I can hardly wait to see he, he and Shelby again. And um, we're going to have Jay Helm will be there. And then David K. Bryant is coming all the way from the UK to release his book. So I can hardly wait to spend some time with him again. He's amazing. So we're going to be there doing that, his book launch, and kind of honoring David, which is going to be a lot of fun. And all of us are available if anybody wants an author to come spend some time and talk about their books at a book club. Um, we can come to, all of us can come to one, or you can split us up or however you want to do it. So let us know. Hi, Scott. Scott Whitman. Okay. Hi, oh, and Dale. Oh, you guys, so many people are on. Thank you for joining me. Anyway, um, so if you want us to come and join your book club, please let Dose Blant know, or you could probably just message me and I'll pass it on, because I would love to, um, I would love to do that. It's fun. I've done that before several times and just sitting with readers and talking about what they think is amazing. All right. So, you know, last pitch. And I'm sorry I'm shaking because I'm holding this phone up trying to keep it off my desk. You know that I sold out my hardbound. I don't have any of those copies. I have one, one paperback left. So if you're interested in a paperback Midnight Omen... Let me know, and I will send it to you along with a personalized letter 
and the wax stamp on the bottom of the letter and on the envelope. So you can get my little skull stamp with my red wax seal. It's very cool. I'm also going to start doing the same with this. This is Grandma Valley Hoo Hoo and the Mystical Coin, and I have both hardbound and paperback. Those books are great for kids. So if you have kids that you want to encourage read, to read, this is a good book. It is on the AR reading list, I think in Dana, I want to say Dana Point, um, but I'm not positive. So double check if you need to have the information to get it on the reading list for your schools. I'm happy to do that. Um, or Dulce Blant can go ahead and send all of the Library of Congress information so that you can get it on the reading list. But anyway, Grandma Valley Hoo Hoo and the Mystical Coin, I will sign it. For those who request it specifically, I will make sure that Boone, who is the star of the book, signs it. He's my grandson, and that's the one I wrote the book for. So um, he's available to sign his the books as well. I also have access to the illustrator, so if you're interested in having Brooke Nett sign, she's an amazing illustrator. And so we'll get three signatures on that, a personalized letter, and the wax stamp. So that'll be fun. Anyway, I am going to say goodbye. Wish you all a wonderful week. And uh, please stay in touch. Let me know if you have any questions for next week. We'll be doing this every week, every Saturday, except when we're in Savannah. And then we'll, maybe we'll do Savannah Live. That'll be fun. I think that's Irish Festival Day. So that ought to be awesome. Anyway, hope you have a wonderful week. Let me know if you have any questions about writing or about my experience publishing and um, going through this whole writing process. I'm happy to share any of that with you. Screenwriting, I have... A little bit of experience with that and I have a freaking amazing writing partner Kevin Dutois who um, was a former editor for Spielberg so he's worked with DreamWorks he has credits that include Avatar, Saving Private Ryan, Gladiator, The Ring, What Lies Beneath, all these movies I mean the guy is amazing you can look him up on IMDb so um, I can always pick his brain and answer questions that I don't have answers to if you want to know about screenwriting. So anyway, hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for coming on. I will answer your comments in the comment section separately after I get off. And have a great week. Bye.